let's talk about this. Velocity banking in a down economy. So I wrote some things that I've noticed since the start of the pandemic, March, when things really kind of shut down in, in the US uh, nationwide, and then kind of how it's been up until this point, 2021, right? So what I've noticed when there is a financial crisis, the last real big financial crisis occurred in 2007, 2008, right? That was an actual financial crisis. That was a, 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 a fiscal irresponsible financial moves that were happening on a big scale with major banks, major corporations that affected the entire United States, right? It trickled down. So people at the top made very poor decisions, very uh, irresponsible actions. They, they were not held accountable. And then it trickled down, affected the whole, the whole entire nation, right? And affected other countries as well, right? When, when the U.S. is not doing well, other countries directly get affected because it affects their tourism, it affects their trade, it affects import-export, it affects everything because the United States, for the most part, is still the wealthiest country in the world, right? For the most part, on paper, who knows? Uh, so the last actual financial crisis was at this point, and then for the last like 10 years or so, we've been recovering. And then boom, 2020, we got the black swan event, COVID. So this wasn't really a financial crisis. It was more of a health crisis that, again, due to irresponsible moves, actions on all different sides of the scale and a lot of uncertainty, a lot of volatility, uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, civil unrest was, was really big, right? So like right as COVID hit, then you, people were locked down and people had to start thinking differently. And then all of a sudden, this issue came up and this issue came up and this issue came up and this issue came up. And so everybody is strapping themselves to their own issues and talking about it. And, and it's just causing a whole lot of uh, uh, turmoil, so to speak. So, all right. So civil unrest. It's also a health crisis. Right. We simply weren't prepared for the most part for this type of event to take place where it's a lockdown, a shutdown, social distance you know, coming up with the vaccine and all, it, it, it was all so fast that it all occurred. So health crisis, civil unrest, which then finance has always come into the equation. So now it's a financial crisis, I would say as well, but it, it wasn't finances that was the cause of it. 07, 08, it was finances. It was poor financial decisions at the top that caused everybody to mess up right? Major banks were giving sub, were giving loans and lending to people who were way under qual, way, just should not have been given loans. And people were not financially responsible going into loads and loads of debt, thinking they can pay it off and not. And boom, big bubble, the bubble burst, right? Now we recovered, so to speak. Now we're here, it's now 2021. So civil unrest, health crisis, now financial crisis. We're dealing, we're now in a, in a very unique, uncharted territory at this point. <clears throat> now, what I noticed was similar financially, financially what's similar to 2020 and 2007, 2008, what I've noticed specifically with borrowing money with debt is that requirements went up, big banks become less favorable, lending gets tighter, right? Credit limits decrease. 
So more denials, less people getting access to debt because the banks are becoming more restrictive, becoming tighter, only accepting those that are more favorable, better credit. So that means so in terms of requirements going up, credit score goes up, DTI needs to be lower, payment history, like they look at your whole report, income needs to be solid. So the big banks are the first to become less favorable, which is why I've always liked credit unions, right? So you'll see me mention that all the time. I prefer credit unions when doing a concept such as velocity banking or just banking and lending and borrowing in general. I prefer credit unions, better rates, better terms with checking and savings accounts, less, less fees, almost in many cases no fees with business accounts and personal checking accounts. It's just a lot smoother, right? And, and for, for business owners, credit unions are fantastic in your local area. They, they, uh, they support small business. You know, there's opportunities to potentially uh, um, collaborate with your credit unions that exists. So it's very interesting stuff. It's a great way to keep money in the community. You know, you've got, you've got credit unions that are, you know, say Christian based. There's, there's banks that are just Christian based. You've got, you've got black owned banks that I've seen like a black owned credit union. You've got so different, different. So it's like a matter of rotating the dollars within the same community. That's a lot better than going with a major bank that they could care less whether you give them the, your money or not. They have so much that they don't need the headache, right? If you have an issue or if uh, you overdraft on your account, it's much harder to get the refund or if you make a mistake, whereas a credit union, a little more leniency from what I've experienced, right? So we prefer the local credit unions, state, federal, nationwide, military credit unions. Um, they're they're a, later on the list in terms of this stuff, their requirements going up and lending becoming tighter. I've noticed credit unions are, are almost positioned pretty well for when economy goes down because for the most part, these are not-for-profit banks. It's smaller, so better managed, I would, I would say. You know, could be wrong could be a little inaccurate here, but from what I've seen working with clients, the ratio of clients getting approved through credit unions are significantly higher than those that apply at Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, you know, the bigger banks.